this time. Um, and welcome everybody uh, to our national conference. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the uh, next speaker, Professor Bernard Helfer from the University of Dumont uh, with his talk, uh, Maximal Estimate for the Kramer Fokker Planck um, Operator with the Electromagnetic Field. So, Professor Helfer, please uh, start. Okay, so I hope the, the connection is good enough because I have some trouble, but I hope it will work. So thank you very much to, to the organizer for inviting me in this uh, conference. And so I'm not sure I'm completely inside uh, the main uh, focus uh, of the conference, but anyway, uh, I choose this, uh, this title because it's connected with uh, representations uh, of new potent uh, Lie groups. So, uh, the Fokker-Planck equation uh, was introduced uh, at the beginning of the 20th century uh, to describe the evolution of the density of particles under Brownian motion. And uh, in recent years, so uh, since maybe uh, 15 years at least, uh, uh, one uh, observed that uh, some global hypoelliptic estimates we were initially uh, established for the analysis of the hypoelliptricity of Hermann's type operator can be useful uh, in the analysis of this kind of operator. So uh, my aim today is to show you for, uh, new results uh, related to this uh, Fokker-Planck uh, or Kramer's Fokker-Planck operator in the case uh, an external magnetic field uh, BE is introduced. So this is partly, uh, this was partly the subject of the PhD thesis of uh, Zainab Karaki. But here, uh, what I will present here is more a synthesis between uh, what I wrote with uh, Francis Nier in a lecture notes in 2009 and uh, what uh, Zainab Karaki has done. Okay, so uh, here is the operator. So I start from uh, the differential uh, operator. So we are, uh, so I will mainly describe the case D equal two. Hmm? So we have two, uh, two variables, X in R2, V in R2. We have a magnetic field, exterior magnetic field. In, R2. in the case of D equal two, this is just a, a function. And we have uh, the harmonic oscillator in R2, in the V variable. And so we have a kind of uh, one, one uh, vector field, V nabla X minus nabla XV, nabla V minus uh, this term. And this term is uh, exactly uh, in the two dimensional case is B of X. So this is the, B of X is the intensity of the, of the electromagnetic field, uh, of the, sorry, of the magnetic field, and uh, you have this V1 dV2 minus V2 dV1. Okay, and so the, so this is not a self-adjoint operator. Hmm? So you have a self-adjoint part, which is the harmonic oscillator in the V variable, and you have a non-anti-self-adjoint -self part, which is this operator. And so we, we are facing uh, the analysis of prob non self adjoint problems. So uh, if we start from uh, a small domain, C0 infinity of Rd plus Rd, and look at the closure for the graph norm, we get the so-called K in min. And uh, one can also uh, consider the maximal extension of K which is, uh, whose domain is D of K max, is the U in L2, that, that KU in the sense of distribu distribution is uh, in L2. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I will use the notation bold K, uh, bold K for the K mean. And so the first question is, uh, under which condition can we uh, have the equality of 
k mean with k max. So this is, in the self-adjoint case, this corresponds to the discussion about essential self-adjoint. Hmm? So if you start to the very small domain, S is the, take the closure, do you get uh, the maximal uh, domain? Okay, so, uh, and so the analysis in the case where you have V equals zero and a regular magnetic field uh, was done uh, by Zenab Karaki uh, recently in the, in the PhD. And so uh, uh, in the second step, uh, there was the question uh, to analyze what is going on when the magnetic field is no more uh, regular. Mm -hmm. And uh, when trying to follow the, the standard criteria for maximal accretivity, accretivity me means uh, that the real part of KUU is, posi is positive, uh, we, uh, we are facing a uh, first question, which is that uh, in, in the usual argument, when used uh, hypoelectricity argument, and which is no more uh, valid, uh, for uh, the case uh, where uh, the coefficients are not uh, say infinity. And so we get uh, uh, c c uh, the type of question we get is uh, what can we say for typically for operator of this type when the xj are no more say infinity but have less uh, regularity. And so the first theorem uh, which is established, oh sorry, uh, here, it's theorem A, and uh, theorem A says that uh, under a rather weak uh, regularity assumption, that is only uh, L infinity lock for B and for V, because we only meet nabla V, it's W1 infinity uh, lock, then the operator K, it is the k min is equal to k max. Ah, sorry, uh, there is a bad cut in my uh, in my statement. Yes, so uh, this uh, this implies effectively uh, what I wrote: d of k min equal d of k max. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the second question uh, we are interested in is to, uh, to describe more specifically the domain of the operator K. Mm -hmm. And for this, uh, we will uh, try to prove a maximal estimate for K uh, using the techniques developed initially uh, by me and Nuriga for the analysis of the hypoelectricity of invariant operators and graded Nilpotent. So uh, most of the, the techniques uh, we have developed at this time uh, are, in the, are summarized in the, in the book. And uh, what is important to remember is that we not only uh, prove uh, hypoelectricity for the invariant operator uh, on the important group, but through, uh, the proof goes through uh, the, the proof of maximal estimates for essentially uh, any uh, repre repre representation of the, uh, that is, we, we not only uh, prove maximal estimate for the operator itself, but also uh, for all the operator pi of p, where pi is an induced representation. And so this is what we want to, to use uh, in this context, where we have some operator and we want to interpret this as uh, uh, in terms of the nilpotently group uh, language. So uh, a few notations. So the B2V uh, corresponds to the domain of the harmonic uh, oscillator, and then we tensor with uh, L2 in uh, the X variable. And here is the statement. So uh, again, I explain it uh, only for d equal to. So uh, we, uh, we assume mainly that B E is in L infinity hmm, bounded. So this is, the global, uh, this is a global assumption hmm, and uh, local uh, C1 uh, regularity. And then we, 
we are more precise for, uh, for the estimate. So we control the oscillation of B of X in this way, hmm? by some powers of nabla V. Hmm? And uh, we also control the, the second derivative, so the variation of nabla V in this way. And then uh, we get uh, this uh, maximal estimate. So we, we start to have it for all u in C0 infinity. And then, uh, of course, by, uh, by density, we, we get it for u in the, in the domain of k. OK, so uh, what does it mean? It means that if you look at, uh, the, at k, then you have separate, you control separately the non self adjoint part, so the vector field part, this term, and the, the part in V. You have the estimate B tilde 2, that is, you control all the derivative of order less, and uh, all the term V alpha d beta, uh, d beta V u, hmm? for alpha plus beta less than 2. And uh, the other point is that also as a side product, uh, you, you get this power here. Mm -hmm. Nabla V of X two third. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, once you have uh, this, so what you, um, what you observe is that now the domain of the operator is the U in B tilde two, such that this is in L2 and this in L2. And so uh, what you observe immediately is, uh, okay, um, in this way, you don't see that the domain is independent of BE because, because of this uh, term, but this term is absorbed in B tilde 2 if, uh, if B is bounded. And so uh, the domain of K is independent of, of B hmm? if B is in L infinity. And so uh, once you have this, you observe uh, that, uh, for example, if nabla V tends to infinity, then K has compact resolvent. But actually you, you observe a little more using a result which have been established uh, uh, with uh, Francis Nier. So here there is a misprint, it's not V equals zero that I wanted to write, but B equals zero. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there is a statement in, this, uh, in, in our lecture notes that if the Fokker, in the case V equals zero, if the Fokker Planck has compact resolvent, then the associated Witten Laplacian on the function, which uh, explicitly uh, reads minus Laplacian plus one over four, Nabla V square minus one half delta V has compact resolvent. And so because uh, the domain here is independent of B, we have the same result for any, uh, any B. So if K for some B in some V has compact resolvent, then the Witten Laplacian has compact resolvent. So this gives a necessary condition uh, to have compact resolvent for K. In particular, if, uh, if V equals zero, then this operator minus Laplacian has not compact resolvent. And so uh, the, the Fokker-Planck operator in the case V equals zero can not be with compact resolvent. So you cannot have this uh, phenomenon of uh, so-called magnetic bottles. That is uh, examples that we have for Schrodinger where uh, just through the effect of the magnetic field, we can get compact resolvent. Okay, so uh, the proofs uh, combine, so uh, the initial uh, work of, with Francis Nier, which uh, use strongly uh, techniques uh, I, get, I have with Nuriga, and uh, in the case uh, V equals zero, the, the work of Zainab, uh, so, and Zainab was working only in the case of the torus, 
And so uh, here we will meet a specific difficulty uh, related to uh, what is going on at infinity uh, in the case of ours. Okay. And so uh, what is uh, the general strategy for the proof of theorem B? So uh, the strategy is to construct uh, an impotent algebra G of type two, and at any point X in RD, to uh, construct an, an homogeneous element Fx in the, in the enveloping algebra UT of G, which satisfies the Rockland condition. And then it remains to find a representation pi x of the Lie algebra, which extends to the enveloping algebra, such that pi x of fx is kx, where kx is a good approximation of the operator k in suitable small balls around the point x. Then uh, we have to patch together the estimate for a partition uh, of unity. And uh, so this kind of partition of unity uh, appear in the, in the book of Lars uh, Hermander in the Weil calculus. And so this was the strategy that uh, was used uh, in the book with Francis uh, for b equals zero and uh, by uh, Zeynab Karaki in the case of the talk. So, uh, but finally, uh, we have to make uh, a few changes in the, in the two proofs to arrive to our goal here. And so uh, actually in the, in the proof, we will first define uh, the element in the Lie algebra. Uh, sorry, we will first define the approximation Kx, then look for the Lie algebra, which uh, is suitable for our analysis, and then define the operator and the induced representation such that uh, pi x of fx equal kx. So this is the main, the general strategy. Actually, uh, we finally not do exactly that, but uh, this is the, the spirit of the proof. Okay, so uh, we have to uh, work for a maximal estimate. And the first thing is that uh, starting from uh, the Fokker-Planck uh, operator, I fix, uh, I choose a point X in, uh, in R2, and I take, I replace B of X by B. So this appears here. And then uh, for Nabla V of X, I replace Nabla V of X by W. And so now I get a family of operator but, uh, on R4, depending on two parameters, W and B. And so the question is to have uniform estimate with respect to these two parameters. And so here is uh, the estimate that, uh, the maximal estimate that I want to prove. So we have, uh, this corresponds to what we want, the control of Nabla V of X. And then, uh, so this is the maximal estimate in the V variable. Then uh, you have something which looks like the interpolated uh, estimate between this one and this one. And on the right, uh, F square plus KW. So this kind of estimate uh, is quite, uh, quite similar to what we get uh, in the analysis of operator on uh, an impotent proof. Okay. Okay, so uh, how to, to deal with that? So this here, we, we, are, we don't work directly uh, with uh, this uh, operator. And we first start by uh, doing a few changes uh, uh, rather standard. First, I, I do the, the partial Fourier transform in X because now uh, nothing else, nothing uh, in the coefficient depends on X. So I get a family depending with a new parameter Xi. So this is the symbol. So the symbol is uh, a polynomial in V and eta of order less or equal to. And then, so this is a rather standard 
that uh, if we play with symplectic uh, transformation, uh, simplifying the, this operator, then automatically by a metaplectic transformation, we can uh, modify uh, correspondingly the operator. And so we, we do this, I don't write explicitly uh, the, the symplectic transformation and uh, the corresponding metaplectic transformation. But after this, I get for new parameters the following operator. I, V, scalar product with rho, so uh, rho one, rho two, which are two parameters, and two other parameters, B prime one, B prime two, and so this is the new operator. So, uh, which depends on four parameters, rho one, rho two, B, B prime one, B prime two, but uh, there is the link between the previous parameters uh, and the new one, and so I don't write all the relation, but in particular, rho square is w square plus psi square, and b prime, the module of b prime is b. In particular, if you want to have uniform estimate for b in a compact, uh, it, it's the same, you have to prove it for b prime. And in the other variable, we want the uniformity uh, over all R2. Now, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the second step is to, uh, to find uh, a suitable Lie algebra G and, uh, and uh, to, this, to show that this operator, K uh, check uh, rho B prime, is the image by an induced representation, which, so uh, finally this representation will not depend on B, but only on, on the rho, uh, satisfying. Uh, so we want that K check rho B prime is the image by an induced representation pi rho of an element F B prime in U2 of J. So you have to show how we reconstruct uh, uh, all these things. So, uh, so more precisely, so we, we want to construct a graded Lie algebra G for G1 plus G2 plus G3 of type two it appears that it will be of rank three. So it's an induced representation. So we have to construct a subalgebra H in G and to find a linear form G star such that L rho uh, Li bracket of H and H equals zero. And at the end, we want uh, to have uh, this property. So we want to recognize the operator K check rho B prime as the image by an induced representation of an element in U2 of G. So uh, everything depends on the parameter B prime, but when you have maximal estimate, uh, this is rather stable by perturbation of the coefficient. So, uh, so uh, essentially you can first assume that B prime is fixed and then the, the local uh, Uniformity with respect to B prime will be uh, easy to control. Okay, and then here, uh, so we we have to to look at this K check rho B prime as a polynomial of the following uh, differential operators: dv1, iv1, dv2, iv2. So at this step, we are very close to what we do uh, with the Heisenberg group. Hmm? And then the new one is I V rho. And then we, we want to construct, uh, we look at all the commutation relation. And so the, the operator K check reads it, can be written in this way as an homogeneous uh, operator. Homogeneous if uh, I assume that this term has homogeneity two and the, all the other terms have homogeneity one. So I rewrite K check rho B prime as a polynomial homogeneous of degree two of this. And now uh, I have to interpret this as a, now I look for the, for the Lie algebra and the representation. So I look just to the, all the relation that I obtain and I try to find a minimal uh, Lie algebra uh, which respect this. So I look at all the commutators. So 
there are all the trivial commutator and then uh, the non-trivial are here. Mm -hmm. So the, this first part uh, is quite close to what you get when you look at the representation of the Heisenberg group, but here you have a uh, you have a new new vector which imposed to look for uh, an impotent algebra of rank three. So uh, once you have seen that, uh, you have uh, a natural uh, graded Lie algebra G verifying the same uh, commutator relation where you take G1 generated by four uh, the four vectors, G2 by uh, what, the bracket of the two elements and then a new one y22 and g3 is obtained by the bracket so uh, so this is my uh, Lie algebra which uh, uh, as you see uh, this Lie algebra depends weakly uh, so depends on what uh, oh did it's uh, independent uh, of the parameter Okay, and then uh, we have to verify that uh, for a given row, uh, defining pi by pi of y i g equal x i j. So I have done all what it, what was possible to respect all the brackets condition, and then uh, that it's in an induced representation. So it's a party, very particular case of. Uh, of what we describe in the book with Nuriga, how to recognize an induced representation. And so uh, the, the subalgebra H is generated by uh, these six uh, vectors, and then uh, L rho is uh, explicitly okay. defined by uh, this, uh, by being zero on all the elements of the basis of G except for Y13, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so uh, I have, yes, it's, and then uh, this is the definition of Fb prime. Mm -hmm. So it depends weakly of B prime. And uh, so we have the, we have the operator and then we can use the machinery. Uh, of, uh, Over? Hello, yes. Is there a question? Is there a question? I no, there was none. No, okay. Please continue. And so uh, now I can uh, use the machinery uh, of uh, I get I, I developed with Nuriga. With Nuriga, we have maximal estimate for this because if we have the maximal estimate for F B prime, uh, we have it for we have it for all uh, representation, uh, all the induced representation. So and so we get this. So this is the maximal estimate. But now uh, we have fixed rho and b prime, and it remains to uh, so this uh, we need also uh, to have the, the control of rho for third to to make an additional work, which could be done through uh, complex interpolation or, or more directly by using uh, this uh, estimate. And uh, now uh, to finish the, the proof, uh, first we go back. Uh, to the initial coordinate, and this is uh, what we get uniformly with respect to W and Xi, and locally uniformly with respect to B. And then we have to introduce a partition of unity. And so uh, this partition uh, of unity is uh, related to, to balls. Uh, there is a parameter delta, which will be small at the end, and R of xj, which is uh, so which has disappeared in the slide, but uh, related to nabla v to the power minus s. R of x is nabla v to the power minus s, and s has to be chosen. Uh, and so, uh, so the the construction of partition of unity is a rather standard. Uh, like in the book, for example, of Fernander. And then uh, we follow what was done with Francis Nier. So we use the partition of unity. Then uh, we are first to control the defect uh, you, due to the partition of unity. So this is this term, which is actually uh, this term, which is actually uh, this term. And here we are uh, 
we can use the partial infinity and get this term. So this is the error term. So we, we should gain here something which is uh, better in some sense than uh, this error. And then uh, to analyze k in the support of phi j, we uh, just see what we have done. We, we replace a k, we, we look at the difference with uh, the operator where we are fixed inside this ball, uh, nabla v of x, which is replaced by nabla x v of x j. Okay, so then uh, this is a, a rather technical. So we have the choice of the parameters has to be suitably. And then uh, at, at the end of this step, we have this estimate. And uh, we have error term here. But these error terms which, uh, look bad at the first uh, at the first uh, at the first look are actually controlled because if you look simply to the very simple estimate real part of KUU, you get that uh, you have uh, larger than nabla v u square plus v u square minus u square. And so these terms uh, can be put, uh, be put on the other side and controlled by u square plus k u square. And so uh, that's it. So this, thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, Professor Helfer, thank you very much for your very interesting uh, question. We are open for any questions. I would like to ask something. Okay. Yes. Bernard, uh, so only a few slides ago where you um, identified these, uh, the error term or error yes. terms. Yes. Could you show this to us again? I was just uh, okay. yes. uh, let's see. Uh, surprised that they simplified so much or that okay. you could somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So K, uh, K uh, commu uh, so the commutator of K with phi J of X. Hmm? Mm -hmm. so so the, the term, uh, so the harmonic oscillator does not appear. So you have only uh, x zero phi j, which is uh, exactly uh, nabla phi j of x v. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. And, and so it looks at the first step, it, it does not look so good mm, because nabla v of x could tend to infinity. Mm? And so it's not, it does not immediately enter in the, Sorry, in the, in the in the this remainder, mm -hmm. so it has to be controlled by this term. Uh, sorry, uh, v. There was v here. Yeah, by this mm -hmm. term. Uh, yes, there is one uh, one uh, one bar missing. Which is yeah. now missing. Yeah. And so, uh, so how do we control this term? We we have s is less than one third. Mm -hmm. And so for, uh, we, we are uh, to cut the integral in two parts. The part where nabla v is larger than uh, big R and the part where it's smaller than big R. In the part where uh, it's larger than big R, we replace, uh, we have S minus one third plus one third, so it can be made small. And the other part for nabla v less than R uh, it enters in the remainder. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Yes, I have a question. Yes, yes, Professor. Yes. Your, your lean algebras, uh, they're nil potent. I, they passed by quite quickly and I couldn't quite tell. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I missed the question. You what? picked some lean algebras. And yes. I think they're nil potent, are they? Is that right? They're graded. Yes. Ah, yes I want to come, you want to come back to the Lie algebra. Yeah, and I was wondering whether <laughs> there, was, there was a certain arbitrariness in picking the Lie algebra, or was there? Are they really defined very clearly by the operators, or are they just a tool that you use to uh, estimate? So I start from uh, the relation I get for these uh, vectors. Hmm? Right. And then in some sense, I try to find the, the smallest Lie algebra, 
that that uh, all the brackets are respected. So, so here I have i. I forget i, but I, I keep the I keep the this relation. Yeah. And then all the other relation has zero. So this is the way I construct my Lie algebra. So I was just wondering if there's some sort of canonical relationship between the operators and the Lie algebras you pick. Uh, canonical. Uh, well, I'm not yeah. sure what canonical means. It, okay, but yes. <laughs> is there some? Uh, so of course, canon, uh, in Rothschild Stein, for example, they, they take the so universal. Like the Rothschild Stein stuff, is it? They, they take a, a kind of universal algebra, which works. <laughs> but it's better to, to take a smaller one. Yeah. Because if you if you look, for example, to uh, to the Rockland criterion. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was very vague on this, but uh, you have to uh, verify the, the Rockland criterion. So you, you have to find that for my operator, I, I satisfy the Rockland criterion. And it's not the sum of xj square, it's a little more complicated. And my operator, it's this operator. So you have to verify. You have to verify the Rockland criterion for this operator. Hmm? I see, and that defines yeah, the Lie. Yeah, so it defines I, the Lie algebra quite precisely. Yes. So you you have to think that. Uh, so what what is proven in Rothschild Stein is is that if we know that the operator is hyperelliptic, then you have uh, very nice estimates. Hmm? Yes. But it's not a proof of hyperellipticity. Okay, thank you. Watch as saying that uh, do not prove hypoelliticity. They prove that they use hypoelliticity to prove maximal estimate. Yes. And so, uh, and so this this was uh, the, all the goal of the proof uh, with Nuriga to to see that under Rockland condition we have hypoelliticity. I see. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Okay. Any other question? Can I ask? Uh, um, yes. Can you also look at the same equation on a uh, Riemannian manifold where you and obtain the estimates by imposing some kind of Ricci lower bounds? Mm, uh, so, um, for which for the same, so I don't know about Fokker Planck on many, for Kramer's Fokker Planck operator on, on manifolds, so I, I, I cannot completely, maybe, uh, so the of course, uh, so you mean a manifold in the X variable? Or? Yes, yes. Mm. So, uh, as I said, they map Karakias on the, the job for, for the torus. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, it's flat, so you have no Ricci curvature. Uh, well, that's probably to do with periodicity or some considerations, right? Uh, uh, so, I don't know. Uh, I have not the, the answer for this. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, to see. Uh, so the shame, uh, the scheme, sorry, the scheme of the proof it could be uh, the same. But uh, then uh, this Ricci term, where do you put it? Uh, I don't know. It's... Uh, not in the not in the PDE, but in terms of getting the estimates to have that Ricci lower bound in order to make things work. That's uh, that's what typically is done in nonlinear or you know okay. evolution uh, equations. First, uh, maybe first we have to, to look to simpler operator like the, the Witten uh, Laplacian or exactly. before, <laughs> before to go <laughs> before to go to this uh, Fokker Planck uh, operator. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We are over the, for the next um, conference. Then, thank you very much, Professor Helfer, for your very nice talk. Very interesting, also. So I will stop. Uh, okay, your... I I stop the chair. Or okay, it's, it's uh, done. This, um, Professor Martini. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay.